Welcome back to the Retro Remix project in Unity. After recording the last video about the player controller that we use on our rolling ball here, I realized that despite all explanations, it might still be a bit confusing and complex to understand what is going on in that script. So I just want to show you a tool that you can use and that can be very useful to understand what's going on in your classes and in your scripts and also will help you to find bugs a bit better. The tool is called debugging or the debugger and if you're familiar with that concept you might skip this video because I will keep it very basic just to give you a brief idea what you can do. Basically what the idea is you can set certain points in your code here they are called breakpoints. And whenever Unity executes code and comes along at that line, then the execution will stop and you will be able to step through the code step by step and inspect variables and so on. In order for that to work, you first need to tell Unity to switch to debug mode. You can see that symbol debugger disabled. You have to check it and then switch to debug mode. And then Unity will compile the scripts anew and it will do so with additional information so the debugging process will work. After that is done, you have to go to your development environment. I am using Rider here, but it's the same for Visual Studio. It might look a bit different, but the concepts are the same. And I will post a link how to do it in Visual Studio in the description. So to enable the debugging in the development environment, you have to start the debugging mode. And now what that does is to watch the execution of the code that Unity executes when the game is running. And when the execution comes along at one of those lines you have marked with a breakpoint, then the execution will stop and you will be brought into this editor here. So let's say for example we want to check what is going on when we are colliding with something. And you might not know the exact location in the code, but you know there's a check for collision method here. And so we will just set a breakpoint at the first possible position here, the first line where the first check occurs. Then we will start the game. And you can see Ryder in this case is telling us, hey, I have something for you. And immediately the breakpoint was reached because check for collisions occurs on every frame and not only when a collision occurs. So every frame we are running here in this breakpoint and this makes it a bit unusable because we will be interrupted every frame. So let's just remove this breakpoint here and only trigger the breakpoint when we are actually colliding with something and that is happening when this check is true. So let's just set the breakpoint here, for example. Now the execution of the game is still paused and we have some controls here and we need to press this green button here, resume program, so that Unity can continue with the game. And now we have collided here with the wall. So again, the execution is halted and we're in here. And what you can do now, you can use this icon here, step over, and this will execute one line after the other. So when we click here, we get here, and then we get here, and then we get here. So basically you can see what is happening internally in the code step by step. And another advantage is that you can inspect variables that are valid in this method. For example, this collider results, we can just hover over it and then you will see it's the collider 2D array and then we can even fold it out and see what's in there. And we can see there was one overlap found in the overlap collider method and we can inspect that. And then we can see all internal variables that has to offer. For example, in our case, we are interested with which game object we have collided. And here you can see it's that variable game object, which we are also checking here. And you can see it's the obstacles game object. 
You can even fold it out and inspect it further in greater depth. And so you get a better understanding what the state of the code is at that moment. So now we know that our game object we have collided with is our obstacle map indeed. Then we have this check here and when we're stepping one step over, now the check is true and we're stepping into this here. And then we can continue to do so. And now at the end of the method you can see we have collided with an obstacle with the wall and can pass is false. And then of course bounce of obstacle is called. And if you're using this button here, step over, you will just execute this method and step over. But if you want to see what is happening inside here, you can use this button, step into. And then you can step line by line here and inspect the variables that are filled here. For example, this collider distance to D. And here you can see all the values and see what they are at this point in time the distance, how far we are into the wall, and the normal vector we are using for getting out of the collision zone. So let's just step a bit further. And our move amount was calculated to this vector. It's very small, of course. We haven't collided very much with the wall. And here you can see this gets added to the position of the rigid body and so on. And now we are resuming the game. But you can see we have already hit the ball again. So let's just remove that breakpoint for now and resume the program. And then we can play normally. And here we want to check when we are colliding with the coin, what happens then. So let's pause the game so we can go safely into the editor again by using Control, Shift and P. That's a shortcut on this pause button here. Then we go back into our code, set the breakpoint again. And again, press Control, Shift, P. And now carefully go to the coin. Then you can see we are once again in here, we step over, and this time we have collided with the items game object, where the items are. So we are stepping into here, and now we want to check what happens in this check item at position method. And for that you maybe want to see what is going into that method as a parameter, and I said you can hover over these variables here, but you can't hover over methods and see what the result of those methods are. But what you can do, you can just mark this whole expression, copy it, and then you have here a small calculator where you can enter that expression and press evaluate. And then you will get the result of this whole expression. So you can see the closest point that was found is minus 15, minus 1.4. Let's close that and step into that method. And if at one line there are several options to step into, we can just select them by going through the list that we get offered. And you can see here in the code, the green item is the one we are stepping into. And let's just step into check item at position. And now we're in here. Let's step over everything. And here you can see the item we have found by using get tile is indeed the coin anim tile. So the animated coin tile. So let's step over these methods. And we know it's a coin, so pick up diamond item and pick up key item won't return true. So we can just continue to step over here. And now when we reach pick up coin item, we can step into that. And now we enter that method. And you can see here the coin item is put into here as a parameter and also the position of the tile. And now when we're stepping over, you can see 
we found that this item is the coin one item and you can see money gets added a 100 then our item map tile is set to null where our coin was then the composite collider component is generated anew the sound manager is playing a sound we return true and here you can see yes we have picked up a coin we return true here we return from that method and now we jump to this line and now can pass is true because we have picked up the coin and we can pass so we don't have to bounce off the obstacle so we step over that so let's remove that for now and resume the program by accident we fell into the void so let's pause the game again and one other hint if you want to test your level you don't have to navigate through all the level to get to a certain point you can pause the game and then you can just grab your ball and because when the game is paused no collisions and no scripts are running so we can just move the ball wherever we want let's say we want to check how the tubes are working let's continue and first we're picking up all the coins then we get into pause mode again and again set our breakpoint here and continue and now when we hit the tube entrance This is on the item layer, so we are going into that case and then we want to step into the check item at position. And then let's go over these real quick. You can also, if you don't want to step many steps using that button, you can of course press F8 or you can just set another breakpoint here for example, we know we want to check the use teleporter item. So let's just set a breakpoint here. And then you can just resume the program and it will stop at the next breakpoint it finds. And that will be here. And we can remove that breakpoint again and step into use teleporter item. And you can see that I made a mistake. Of course, it's not a teleporter we have collided with, but it is the tube tube entry tile so this is false let's go back and we need to stop at the right tube check here so let's step into that and now you can see yes indeed it's a tube entry and here you can see we're doing some checks what is the current tile item that means is there any item on the tile we are currently on and that prevents that we are entering the tube from the sides from the entry left entry right or from a normal tube tile so let's continue here then we have no data for the tube because we are using the new method that detects whether the tube is on the map and not using the tube data so we're stepping into here, right tube without path. Here you can see the player gets disabled and then a coroutine is started. And because coroutines aren't necessarily executed in a linear way, but they are executed at certain steps in time, it is best that we jump to this coroutine, right tube sequence, by holding control and clicking on that. You can see it's here. And then we're setting a breakpoint here again. And then we resume the program. And you can see we arrive here at the coroutine. And you can also see the values here. The entry tile position where we have collided with is minus 48, minus 17. And now we want to set that as our first destination point where we have to roll to. And in that line, you can see this position gets converted to world space by using cell to world step over that and you can see minus 48 minus 17 in cell space is converted to minus 70.5 minus 16.5 in world space and this is where our ball has to go to 
let's continue. And here to understand what happens, it would be nice to see what the distance is while this loop is running. And like I said, you can't hover here over that method. But what we can do, we can evaluate that expression by copying it, entering it here and evaluate. And you can see we are still 0.8 units away from our destination. So this loop will run a while and this result will get decreased over time as long as we are more than 0.16 units away. Now it is a bit tedious having to enter this expression every time we are running through that loop. So what else you can do, you can add this as a watch. And you can see then it appears here in our list of currently tracked variables. So let's continue stepping in here. Here our position is changed by going 0.16 units in the direction of the destination. And you can see our position here is minus 46 and minus 16. And now we're stepping over and our position has improved a bit in the direction of the destination. And that is something that may happen when you are using coroutines. So when you're having a yield in a coroutine, it's best not to step over it, but just to set another breakpoint. For example, we can set a breakpoint here that we will stop the execution every time we are looping through that loop. So if we are resuming the program, we are stopping here again. And this is our second time we're in that loop. And here we can just press refresh on our expression. And you can see it has advanced from 0.8 units to 0.64 units. That's the 0.16 units we have advanced. So let's resume, refresh. Now we're even closer and resume, refresh zoom fresh and you can see we're almost there one more time and here you can see we now have a distance of one and that is because we have left the while loop the last time because we were closer than 0.16 to our destination and then everything here happened we got a new destination and that is one unit away now so if you want to check that we need to set another breakpoint here so if we're doing that a few times and we can take a look at the ball and you have see it has moved until here. I have cut a bit of the video out so don't wonder why it is already here and not here because now we can take a look what happens when we want to evaluate the next destination. Let's remove that breakpoint here and resume the program and now Let's take a look. We have wandered down a bit. And now it's time to get a new destination because when we press refresh here, you can see we are 0.04 units close to our destination. So it's time to get a new destination. And we're doing that by setting our current position to the destination. So we ignore the small difference to the destination and just move to the destination and then we will find a new destination by going to the get next tube tile position and you can step in here and step through that and get a better understanding of the internal doings here. So for example, the rotation of our tile is zero. So we have used the original orientation of the tile palette tile. And here we are in the case that we're currently on a normal tube tile. And our look direction now is zero, one, zero. And that means we're looking up, one Y coordinate up. And when we're checking our current tile position plus the look direction, is it not our last position, but it is because when we are looking up here, you can see here it's where we're coming from. So that's not where we want to go to. So that's not where we want to go to. And then we are going in the else case 
and we're subtracting the look direction, we're looking down, and then we refine a tube tile at that position, and we return that as a destination. And now our new destination position is set to that tile. And now we can just resume the program until we arrive here again. And here you can see we have advanced to that point. Do that again. And we have advanced at that point. And this is done until we find no more tube positions. So let's just make a breakpoint outside of that loop. And when we let the program continue, then we will arrive outside that loop. And as you can see here, we have indeed arrived outside the tube. And that's basically the idea behind the debugger. And it's really, really useful if you want to understand how the code works and what it does. And also if you want to find bugs. For example, when I coded this get next tube tile position, as you can see, it's a bit complex. And I had some trouble because the ball was moving in the wrong direction at some point. And I was able to step through these lines and see, oh, I'm using a plus here and I have to use a minus here and so on. And that will help you greatly when you can see what your values are and where you maybe have made a mistake. So I hope you find that useful and you can use it in your own games or for understanding this game. It might look a bit complicated at first, but just give it a try and I promise you it will enhance your programmer's life immensely. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Happy creating and take care.